Good evening folks and welcome to the last week of February and obviously the last week of my Belgian beer. As, as you know February was Belgian beer month. <clears throat> I had one beer for every uh, week and this is the last one. And this one is uh, Petrus Age Red. If that sounds a little bit familiar. Uh, there's actually a line of Petrus beers and this is one of them. I think I've done probably three, four, maybe five of them so far. And I think there's maybe one or two that I haven't done, so hopefully down the road I can get that. Uh, this is actually, again, one of the beers that my friend Mike gave me. Uh, he does a lot of traveling. I went to his house. He had basically a closet full of international beers, and he stocked me up with like 12 different beers. So we're going from there. So I'll read the label, see what information we can get, <clears throat> and we'll go from there. Now, if you remember Petrus, they, um, I don't know if all they do. But the Petrus line of beer, they're basically sour beers or, or partially sour beers. And I'll get into that in a second. So we'll see what's on the can, or sorry, on the bottle. So you got Petrus Age Pale, 8.5% alcohol, 15% Fodor beer, and 85% Double Brown. And I'll get into that in a second. And it says Petrus Age Red is a blend of 15% Petrus Age Pale, pure folder beer that has been aged for two years in oak folders, and 85% double brown with sour cherries. For the fruit beer lover, but with an ideal sweet sour balance, full bodied, fruity, and refreshing sour at the same time. So there you go. So we'll crack it open. Actually, I'll give my glass a quick cold water rinse as per usual. And again, that's just basically to cool down your glass, get rid of any dust that might be on the glass. I always get a little bit of drop of water in the bottom. I want to get rid of that. So we can obviously, right off the bat, we can see the brown. Definitely smell the cherries. Hmm. And you can also smell the sourness. Different. Now, it kind of reminds me if you remember back before Christmas. I did an episode, it was a Lindman's Fruit Beers. It was, a, again, it was Belgian beers. It was a pack of four different beers. I believe Cherry was one of them. That's kind of what this one kind of sort of reminds me of, but not completely. All right, so reiterate, reiterate what I already said, what I read off the label. It's a 8.5% alcohol, so it's fairly high up there. Um, they say 15% Fodor Age Pale. And Fodor is basically, a Fodor is a giant wooden cask or barrel. Now I'm talking about like probably a million liters, like the size of a room. So not what we consider a barrel. And what it is, they age their beers in these Fodors for up to two years, as I already said. And it's, so it's 15% Fodor aged pale. And if you remember, I actually did it. a episode of Petrus. It was actually aged pale. And I actually said at the time, that is their mother beer. And what I mean by that is a lot of the Petrus beers, they're a mixture of two or more types of beers, normally two. And normally the aged pale is the mother beer, so that's the main beer. So that's the, the base of the beer. That's, they, they use their page ale and they add other beers to that to get the mixture they wanted. So for this one, this one is 15% the aged Fodor pale which is aged for two years, and then the other one is 85%. It's a double brown with sour cherries. And as they consider a fruit beer specifically, and they say it has a nice, sweet, sour balance. I'm kind of getting that with this. And as I also read on the can, sorry, on the bottle, they say it's fully bodied, fruity, and refreshingly sour at the same time. So there you go. And it's definitely unique. I also did 
Petrus, the double brown, a while ago. So that's probably, that's kind of reminding a little bit of it as well. It's, um, it's definitely unique. Now the brewery that comes out, it's a family owned brewery. Actually they've owned it since 1895, sorry, 1894, the fifth generation. I believe they started off with farmers. The name of the brewery is, and I hope I'm going to pronounce it right, D. Bra Bandier. So it's D E B R A B A N D E R E. So I call it D. Bra Bandier. I'm probably a little bit not pronouncing it entirely correct, but you get the idea. Alright, so I got to give this one a rating. And as always, my ratings are out of five. A one being it's a drain port, don't like it, can't finish it. A two being yeah, I'm not a big fan, but I'll drink it because I don't want to waste a beer. A three being a good beer, a four being a very good beer, and a five being the best beer I've ever had. Um, this is a really unique beer. It's exactly what they say. You got the fruitiness, which comes with the sweetness, and then you also got the sour. And it's pretty well balanced because you, you can actually taste both of them, but neither one kind of lingers with you. So it's unique. An 8.5% 8 alcohol, like I'm, a lot of high alcohol beers, like when I taste them, I can tell, yes, it's definitely high alcohol beer. You always get the taste of almost like a hard liquor taste type of thing. Perhaps I'm the only one that get that, but when I... A lot of times when I taste a high alcohol beer, I can actually tell right away that yes, it's definitely high alcohol. This one not so much, which to me makes it a little bit more enjoyable. Alright, to give it a rating, I think I'm going to give this one a 4.0, which basically means it's a very good beer. And I'm enjoying it more than I thought it would be totally honest. And I'm really enjoying, as I said, the kind of sweet, sour balanced. It's actually balanced really well. Yeah, so I think I'm going to stick with 4.0. So you go, folks. That's my rating for the final beer of March, uh, Belgium Beer Month. For next month, I'm going to do, I think, I'm going to do a Newfoundland Beer Month. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to get, I'm not sure how many i got to look. I think it's four or five. I normally do these on Wednesdays. I'm going to try to find four or five Newfoundland beers, and that's my home province where I'm uh, videotaping this. And if anybody's not familiar with Newfoundland, any international viewers, basically we're a small island, about half a million population, off the east coast of Canada. So we're basically the most eastern point in North America. Next, uh, next to us, if you go uh, east, would be Ireland. And actually the community that I'm in, Pooch Cove, our motto is first to see the sun. The sun comes up where the first ones in North America to see it. So, in uh, recognition of that, for the month of March, I'm going to do Newfoundland Beer Month, and I'm going to try to get mostly uh, craft beers from around the area. In the last probably five, ten years, the craft brewery here has really taken off. I got two beers actually already on tap. I'll find a couple more. The two that I have is a almost a one liter can of it's a blonde ale. Basically, it's Western Brewery, Western Newfoundland Brewery, and as you can see, pretty basic. It's got the Newfoundland flag, and it's beer, beer, beer. If you look further on, they actually say it's Blondale. And another beer I have is Kitty Vitty, or sorry, it's uh, Yellow Belly. I've done several beers for these guys, and if anybody's been following the news on this part of the world, in January we had a storm, almost a storm of the century. Basically I think we had like a hundred centimeters of snow over a 24 hour period and we end up being in a state of emergency for a week until they cleared it up. And this beer is the Flurricane Snowmageddon Pale Ale. So I got two pale ales and hopefully I'll pick up another two or three beers depending on how many weeks we got. So there you go, folks. That's uh, this week's episode. I'm glad you could join me, and hopefully you can join me in March for the Newfoundland Beer Month, and we'll see what kind of uh, brews we can get into. Until next beer, as always, enjoy responsibly. Cheers.